Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and what I believe is an absolutely incredible puzzle. It's called Balanced Chaos and it's by Fritz Diss. And one of the testers had a go at this and described it as, you know, possibly the best puzzle they have ever solved, which is praise indeed. I looked it up on Logic Masters Germany, and it has got five stars out of five difficulties. So it's clearly not easy, an enormous approval rating, but many of the comments are echoing the comments from, from the tester. Basically, apparently this is something very, very special indeed. I've had a quick, I've had a brief read of the rules. I have no clue how this can possibly solve um, because the rules are relatively short and sweet. Um, <laughs> anyway, you can see we've got no borders in the grid or very few borders. Um, I'll read you the rules of this one in just a moment or two. I have a few things to tell you about first. Um, let me start with the fact that there's going to be a bonus video. I don't know if it's gone up already today. If not, it'll go up tomorrow um, in which we're going to tackle the latest GCHQ Christmas quiz. Uh, so they always uh, release a sort of Christmas challenge. Um, and I think it's aimed at sort of older school kids up to the age of 18. Um, but we get a lot of requests to have a go at it every year. So we're going to do that. And um, we haven't done it yet, but I'm hoping we'll be able to do it. And I'm hoping the video may even be out already. Uh, you will have to let me know. Um, but there we go. That's coming very soon. Um, other than that, um, over on Patreon, uh, there is a couple of things I wanted to mention. I have recorded a solve of this puzzle, Tall Cat's Shadow, which is a cave skyscraper hybrid. It is a brain breaking puzzle. <laughs> I did it last night. It took me ages. Um, so there is a bonus video over there in which I tackle this. The reason it's over on Patreon is it has a very, very strange rule set. And the testers thought that it might not be suitable for the a sort of main channel video for that reason. I will tell you, though, Toolcat is one of the best constructors on Earth. And this puzzle did absolutely well. It, it reinforced my impression of of Toolcat as an incredibly clever fellow <laughs> because how he made that puzzle I do not know um, but if you want to see me break my brain that's a video over on Patreon now the other thing that's on Patreon is Mark's solve of a very recent and very vicious cryptic crossword every month Mark tackles the Times Club monthly special which is a very very hard cryptic Mark tries to do it without a dictionary. I dare to say he's probably the only person on the planet who would have any success at attempting that. Um, but for those crossword aficionados, it's always quite a special video. That's out as well. Um, other than that, let's say happy birthday to Emma, who's turned 22 today. Uh, and I know this because your boyfriend Ollie wrote to us. Um, and Emma, congratulations on your recent English degree. And I hope that all is well in your world and you have a brilliant day today with lots of cake, of course. Um, and speaking of cake, Justin, you've turned 35 today. And I know this because your fiance, Zoe, wrote to us. Um, and I know the two of you are saving for your wedding. So I hope you're able to celebrate a bit today. Uh, cakes don't cost much and you can have a lot of fun with them. So I hope that's all good. And then finally, I have a very special birthday to announce today to Theodore. Now, Theodore, you have turned one today. You might be our youngest viewer, but I gather you watch all our videos with your mummy, Caitlin. So Theodore, I hope that you have an absolutely brilliant day. Um, I know you like my guitar playing, Thank you for liking that, um, which I probably better not do on the hoof. Um, but anyway, and I don't know. Happy birthday anyway. But Theodore, happy birthday. And I hope that I hope you're allowed cake, actually, at your age. I'm not sure. Um, other than that, just to mention the cryptic scriptures of the Secret Snake Society, which is our patron reward. Um, oh, I should actually tell you, I finished the Fistimafel hunt. I finished it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The final puzzle. I, I could tell you the name of it. It's called The Ancient Wall. Let me tell you, that puzzle is very, right, unbelievable. I know Fistenfell himself is incredibly proud of it and with good reason. It is absolutely amazing. 
Um, but that nearly broke my brain as well. But anyway, I've, I've finished testing the hunt. It's going to be epic. Um, so we're just waiting on a bit of text now. And I, I don't know how long that's going to take. So I still can't promise it before Christmas, but that's what we're aiming for. Um, but anyway, this, this hunt is available right now on Patreon. And very well done to the following people who managed to solve all of the puzzles in it. So Alan Bagg, Cool Grandad. Good Latin, by the way, Cool Grandad. Um, Steve Williams... Matthias Holter, Dr. Ganarelli, and the girls of Form 9C. I love the idea of this, that school teachers are getting their sort of, presumably, I'm guessing maths teachers, but I might be wrong, are getting their sort of clever kids to, to get involved in these Sudoku hunts. That is great. So, Shay Ganarelli, lots of kudos to you. Uh, Joshua Rogers, Zach Gerlock, Richard Breen, Rob from Michigan, Marit Watery, Jonathan uh, Jonathan Shane, or does that say Shane? I can't read my own writing. I hope that's right. Hmm, I'm not sure. Jonathan Share maybe. <laughs> Why can't I read my own writing? That's bad. Uh, Pathogenus, Manuela Tempestini, Amanda O'Shea, and Eusebio S. Could be Eusebios, but I'm not sure. It's got a U at the end of it, so it's probably Eusebio. Um, anyway, all of you did magnificently well. Congratulations. And with that, let us do battle. Let's commence battle with Balanced Chaos by Fritz Diss. These are the rules. Divide the grid into nine orthogonally connected regions with nine cells each. Fill every row, column and region with the digits 1 to 9 once each. A few region border segments are already given. Good grief. Right, so what this means is we've got to divide the grid into uh, regions. I'm just going to draw some attempted regions in. Is that 9 cells? It might be. Um, and then this region could come down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be nine again. Um, so we're going to have to build some regions like this until we finish fill the grid with nine of nine such regions. And then in each region, we would have to put the digits one to nine once each. So in this puzzle, we don't get any three by three boxes given to us. And indeed, it's probably well, it's possible there will be three by three boxes to discover, but we will have to discover them. Um, and then there's just one more paragraph rules. It says blue lines are region sum lines. For a given line, the region borders separate the line into two or more segments with equal sums. Distinct segments within the same region are not summed together. So I know most of you watching this video, certainly if you've watched Cracking the Cryptic before, you'll be familiar with region sum lines. But what's what this means is let's just divide up. Let's do some division of this line. Oh, I probably shouldn't use green on that blue line. Uh, let's use gray. Yes. Uh, so let's say that those cells, um, let's do some two cell segments, those cells and those cells. So let's say that as we were dividing the regions, we discovered that this line here was divided in the manner that I've shown. So each of these different colors is in a different nine cell region. But what the line would be telling us is that those three digits plus those two digits, no, what am I talking about? Those three digits, whatever the sum of them is, is equal to the sum of those two digits, is equal to the sum of those three digits, is equal to the sum of those three digits. So that's how that works. Now, there was one, one other bit. It said distinct seg segments within the same region are not, are not summed together. So let's flick this round slightly and imagine that the red region did something like this. Then I think we're saying those four distinct segments are not summed together. Okay, so if, if it did do this, it would be saying that this, the sum of this digit, so just whatever's in this cell, is equal to the sum of those two digits, is equal to the sum of those three digits. So we don't add these three together. We treat them as separate. Uh, is equal to the sum of those two, is equal to the sum of those three, etc., etc. So that is an absolutely well, it's amazing to me. It's just amazing that this can have a unique solution, let alone one that's findable by a human. 
Um, but I do claim to be human, although Mark often doubts that, which is very mean. Anyway, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play Let's Get Cracking. Now I've got a region here, look, that region must escape. <laughs> so I've got two cells of a region. Um, and we're also presumably being told that on this line, the region sum for the line is not that big. Because the maximum that could be would be a nine. And if that was a nine, well, obviously, yes, we can't have any four cell strings because four different digits, if, if this was a region, this would add up to 10, well, at least one plus two plus three plus four, and 10 is greater than I could put into this cell. In fact, ah, okay, right. That's actually really clever already. That is really clever. Let's think about how we're gonna divide the top of uh, column one. How are we going to do we, we know this can't be a single segment because it would add up to 10. So we've got to divide it up. But let's say we divided it up like um, this. Well, that's broken the puzzle, hasn't it? Because the only um, this cell here would be the same number as that cell because they both be their their only sort of appearance on the line would be in these two positions and they should have the same sum. And they couldn't do because that would repeat that digit in column one. So I think that means that this top line has to be divided into dominoes, which is rather cute straight away. Um, let's do some dominoage. Yes, you can't have another one cell sum because it would be the same as the purple sum. So that means we can get some region borders done. So uh, by the way, I'm going to draw region borders. Now, I always have my pen drawing tool on. You can see here, hopefully you'll be able to see that. Uh, if you if you aren't seeing the ability to draw like like these lines, enable your pen tool. And in, in the software, which Sven has done such a magnificent job with, you'll be able to draw all sorts of funny lines all over the place, including diagonal lines. But hopefully we won't need those in this puzzle. So... Now, how does it work at the bottom of this column then? Can we divide this into dominoes as well? No. I want to say no to that because why? The problem is that we're going to go round the bend, not just uh, not just sort of um, metaphorically, but actually literally. If we if we go round the bend, we can. So if those, for example, were a segment. And then these were a segment of a different color. Uh, let's make that yellow. Then, although this looks in this column like it's a single cell, it's not. We're actually adding up three different digits. So we don't have the problem that we're duplicating this digit in this cell. Um, let me just think about the secret for a moment, though, because the maximum that could be is nine. So the maximum, the maximum four cell sequence or four region sequence can add up to is 36. So that would have to be at least, hang on, ah, hang on, that doesn't work, does it? Um, I've got to have, I don't think this does work. I don't think this does work. Right, so I was thinking that there, were, there wasn't any pressure on having a three cell sequence underneath the purple, the purple region here, but I think there is a problem with it actually on reflection. And it's because of a secret that I only tell my favorite people, but I'm gonna share that secret with you. The secret is that 
there's a sort of mathematical trick to some Sudokus. A complete column of a Sudoku contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. If you add up those digits, you'll get 45. So, how could we make this column add up to 45 if we have a three cell sequence beneath the purple? And the answer is, I don't think we can in any way that's going to be legitimate because um, if we try to do this, the maximum I could put into this square would be a nine, which means the maximum sum of those eight cells is nine plus nine plus nine plus nine, that's 36, which means this cell, in order to make the column add up, would have to be a nine. Now, if we reduce this number, we're going to increase this number to compensate. Let's just do an example of that. If this is an eight, those eight cells add up to four times eight, which is 32, and that requires this to be a 13. That's not going to work. So actually, I think we are okay to say that there are dominoes then at the bottom of this column. Well, at least that's a domino. But maybe that can still be a three cell sequence. Why can't I immediately tell um, whether that's true? That's certainly a domino because it definitely cannot be a three cell sequence or a one cell sequence. So we can do another region division there. Now, now, what does that mean? Can we now say with any certainty, so the, these are four lots of this. So if this was nine, that would be 36. That would leave me a two cell sequence at the bottom that added up to nine because to make 45, these would have to add up to nine and therefore be, be their own boundary. So there would be a, a region division between these two cells and this cell. If this is eight, on the other hand, these would add up to 32. That can, no, that can't work, can it? Because then these would add up to 13 to make the column work, but we'd have to make one of them um, because our region sum is only eight in this example, we'd have to split these up and that's going to repeat the eight in the column. So that just doesn't work either. So in fact, this column is deducible. It is a, it, that number is deducible. That's a nine. We have to make this nine in order to make the maths work of the column. We have to have a two cell sequence at the bottom that because these cells add up to 36, this is the balancing figure for the column, which therefore adds up to nine. Again, we can't make it a single digit total here because if we try and introduce single digit totals, that will be another nine. So you can't go nine zero or something, that won't work. And then because this adds up to nine, that's the end of its region. So that goes in and that region has to get out. <laughs> so this becomes a yellow cell. Oh, this is very clever. Wow. Now this region is different from yellow. So there's a new region. Oh, but this could, no. Well, I was about to say that could be a one cell region, but no, it can't be a one cell. It can't, we can't split this here because that will only, that region will only have one cell in it and we need, it needs to have nine. So we know that whatever goes in there must extend along the line. Um, now, what color should we make this one? Am I allowed to, oh, the green is very garish. Uh, let's make it um, grey. Grey is fine. Grey is fine. Okay. So, <laughs> so now we probably have to use this line, do we? But how are we? How on earth are we going to do that? What is going on? Hang on a minute. Let me think about this. Um, <laughs> I haven't got a clue what to do. This is. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put. I'm going to put a black boundary around the edge <laughs> uh, because that will make me feel like I'm making more progress. Well done, me. Um, So each of these regions is going to hit this line here. Now, 
So, but the problem is there could be other regions, couldn't there? This could this could come out there, this could come out there, and then another region could come in there. So we don't really know much about the sort of the geometry of this line. Can we? Is it something to do with? Is it something to do with the fact that? all five of the regions in column in column one have hit this region does that imply no it, well it would imply that that's that this line is dividable into a number that's divisible by five but only if there were no other regions poking in um Or is it the fact that we can't... Ah, hang on. Yeah. Is it the same as in column one, where we can't have... We can't have too many one-cell regions here, can we? Ignoring the yellow thing here, because I don't really understand how the yellow thing moves. But each of these regions is going to poke into the line coming down column two. Now, yeah, actually what I said earlier is it wouldn't work, would it? If I did that and that, and then argued that there was a new region coming in here, for example, that's clearly absolute nonsense. And the reason it's nonsense is that the digit here would have to be a number but it would be the same number that was this digit because this, the segments have to have the same sum so actually right okay so I can only have uh, now, now I think I've proved off now I think I've proved this myself wrong immediately because I've got seven cells there at the start of the, these seven cells in column two, but I've got four regions sticking out into those seven cells and I can only have one one cell clue. Okay, right, so the other three all have to be two cell clues. Yeah, that, that feels right. Is that right? I've got, I think that is right. That feels right, at least. So I've got, if we think about these seven cells, which I know have to accommodate at least one cell in each case from four different Sudoku regions. These seven cells do. Now, how could two of these regions only take one of these five cells? Well, that's not going to work because those two regions, when they take the one cell, are going to have the same number in them in order for the region sum line rules to work. So that means that three of these four regions, at, well, at least, no, exa well, it's exactly three, isn't it? Have to take two cells. Well, that's six cells. And the other one will only be allowed to take one cell. And that is actually going to be interesting for this cell, I think. But, and the reason I think that this one suddenly comes into its own is that these seven cells are fully consumed by these four regions. Because I need three dominoes, or th three, 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 of, three of these four regions have to consume two cells, and the other region has to consume one cell. And therefore, this cannot start um, moving up this column because these seven cells are hypothecated for these four regions. So therefore, we can do this. And that's going to allow us to do that. Now, which might be the most underwhelming thing ever, but it does allow us to extend our grey. Now, now though, this is really lovely because now... Gray can't go any more because we know that the total for the for the column one line is nine. Now, if this gray went there, 
that would be a string of cells that must add up to at least 10. So gray stops and we can do that. Oh, gray stops and we can do this. So gray goes up now, which means yellow goes up. And now red, to get out, red has to come through there. And therefore this cell, we, well, we know this cell is not yellow because if it was yellow, there would be two instances in these six cells where one of the regions would have to only take one cell on the line and there would be a repeated digit. So that must be red. And that's what this, this border is telling us. So look, we can do more borderage now. We can do more borderage. The yellow has to get out of this. How do you have the idea? Fritz this, that this has any chance of working. Look, the grey can go further. So there's a, a new region starting at the bottom now. So those two cells. <laughs> I could do better. I can do better than this. Um, I'm running out of colours. I want to use the greeny colour. But... But it's a bit bright on the line, isn't it? I can sort of see it. Um, I've not used blue as well, but I'm guessing blue is bad. Let's just have a look. Blue, I can sort of see, actually. I can sort of see the blue background against the... Let me um, let me just do a little bit of fiddling with the colours. I think it, the software allows me to do this now. So I click this and I will make this... a darker blue maybe is that going to help let me see if that's helped at all or have will i have made the problem worse no that does help i can now see that all right so i'll do that and i'll make the green slightly different as well and the way to do this by the way is you just um double you just hold down your mouse your left mouse button on one of the colors and um, then click on it and it gives you this option to sort of create different colors so that's more of a sludgy color that's very clear now oh that's fantastic well done Sven right but this is the this is the beauty I'll make this green now um, this is the beauty because how could this line take this cell and you might say there's no problem with that and you'd be right, except that remember that the read the sum for this this line around this line is nine. So we'd now be saying that those six cells add up to eighteen because nine here and nine here. You can't make six different numbers in a Sudoku add up to eighteen because the triangular number for six is twenty one. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six is twenty one. So this cannot work, and that means that that little cell there has to be of a different quality to these two cells. So now we're going to get more regions. Look, we're going to get more regions. Oh my goodness me. This is just, in this is incredible. This is incredible because this has got to get out now. So, or, so now we're going to go back down the staircase, aren't we? Red's got to continue. Yellow's got to continue. Gray's got to continue. Now I'm starting to believe it's possible to construct this grid. That's got to be blue. Um... Okay. Right, so we know green is going to have to come and take at least one of these cells. I can do more region divisions now. Let's do some blackening of the borders. Um, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. We can do stuff along the bottom. In fact, look, I should just ring the grid in black, shouldn't I? That's going to make me feel... Like, again, more progress is being made, although it's spurious progress. Um, right, so how many, how many different regions have I got identified now? Because none of these regions can be the same, can they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's only one more region to find, which is probably up here somewhere. Um... Right, I've got seven cells in that one. I've, oh, I've got eight cells in yellow. So the yellow's last cell is in one of those two positions and either would be helpful. If it was here, it would push red up there. 
and this horseshoe would have three digits on it. I want to say that's impossible. That is impossible. That is impossible. Right, that is not red. Because, again, it's mathematics. If this is red, let's, let's try and maximize all of the all of the, um, the the line stripes that we've got in the red region if we've made this red now the key here is that in column two I know that there is a one cell um, a one cell line segment because it, remember the logic when we thought about these seven cells and these four regions we knew that three of the regions had to take dominoes and one of them would be left with just a single cell clue on this line. So the maximum number that that line segment could, let's say it was this one, let's say it was this one and it, we had that situation. Then again, that the maximum size of this, this digit is nine. So the maximum, the absolute maximum size, oops, oopsie, of, um, well, that's what I was sort of trying to do, these four cells, is therefore 9 here and 9 here, which is 18. But these three cells have a single digit total, which again, which I can't even make 9 because there's a 9 here. So the maximum size of those would be 8, which is even worse because 9 plus 9 plus 8 is 26. And that would be saying that the maximum we can make those seven cells add up to is 26, but they're all in the same region. So they all have to be different numbers. And the triangular number for seven is 28. And 28 is higher than 26. There is a knowledge bomb for you for cracking the cryptic. So this is not red. That is not red. And that means that is red. Um, and it means that I can draw in that line segment, which I think means that that's got to be purple. And the reason I say that is that imagine this wasn't purple. Purple would go off here and then a new color would come in here. But that would imply that this number and this number were the same because the only instance of the line in each of their regions would be one cell and you can't have a repeated digit so that's got to be purple now yellow oh yellow is finished i've done a region yellow's finished there we go uh so we can just ring that region in a flurry of yellow now for now gray is getting quite close to being finished i think i've got eight cells in it green has to come here mustn't cut off blue so blue's going to come up the edge gray green's got to come up here gray is finished one two three four five six seven eight nine <laughs> gray is finished um blue has to keep coming up the edge green has to come there how many greens have we got eight i've got one more green to take which is either here so it's going to be another digit on this horseshoe right well that that's not green that's not green because again now I've got a problem in these two cells because remember the, the rule it said distinct segments within the same region are not summed together so the two possibilities now because green is finished for the colors of these two cells either these are in different regions let's make one of them orange and one of them purple well, then these two digits are the same number by the region sum lines, or these are in the same region, but we but because each visit to the line has to be treated as a distinct segment, this digit and this di digit still have to have the same number. So that doesn't work either. So that's never green, which means that's green, which means that that's green finished. <laughs> green is finished blue now goodness only knows what's going on with blue up this side we've got one two three four five eight so i've got two more possibilities for blue and blue doesn't go here because if blue goes there that digit is not blue and therefore this cell and this cell would contain the same number so that's blue oh this is just absolute genius 
this is absolute genius from Fritz Diss, that you can even have the conception that this is possible to construct. I mean, well, wow, actually, just I'm just going to pause for a moment there. I think it's amazing. I think it's absolutely amazing you can build these regions, even to this point, let alone that you can finish them. But how on earth is this going to actually give me numbers? That is a very remarkable thing. That is a that is a very remarkable thought. I mean, I. I mean, I can see that there's sort of some trickery we can do, like we could say in this column, those two digits are going to be the same as those two digits, but how are we actually going to know the quantum of anything? I feel it feels very difficult to me to believe that the mere fact that this is divided up into segments that add up to nine, even if I knew what this one, I suppose if this one was a very, if this one was a very low total, but no, it's going to have to be at least, it's going to have to be at least seven, isn't it? Because there needs to be three ways of making the total in this column, because there's going to be three dominoes in this column. So if it was six was the total, you could do two, four, one, five, but then the other domino would get broken. So it's got to be at least seven for this line. Okay. Is, and sort of the fact that you're introducing optionality makes it harder to believe the Sudoku will solve. But anyway, let's get to that in a minute. Um, we have got we have got eight cells of red. Oh dear, I think I'm about to hit a brick wall here. I think I'm about to hit a brick wall. I see nothing. Um... I mean, is anyone seeing anything here? What on earth do I do with this? I do not know. What? I suppose I know those two are part of the same region. And that's not that region is not red because red can't get there. But that's probably this is part of probably part of a new region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, or or it's part of purple actually. It could be part of purple. Three, four, five. Yeah, that that's probably right. That that could be red, and then purple will come across here, and then we'll just have three regions at the top. Um, I wonder if there is a way that I can detect the sum of this line. I can't even use mod 5 arithmetic, can I? Because this, this segment here, if that had just been one single instance of itself, then I could have said that that string would have been divisible by 5. Five, but I can't because this is a two cell segment and I don't know what that is oh bobbins I don't know what to do <laughs> has anyone got any ideas it's going to be I haven't got a clue. I mean, I'm just com I'm completely out of ideas here. I don't think it can be something like Sudoku, sort of the fact these two digits are the same as those two digits. I can see nine is actually a bit restricted in red because because, yeah, this is very, this is a tricky point. But because we know that there's, we, we know that the total for the column two line is a maximum of nine, 
because one of the digits in it we haven't found it yet but one of what either green or orange is only going to pay one cell of visited of visitation to the column two line um, so we know that the total is a single digit total which could be as high as nine but that still means you can't put nine into those two cells because the other digit would be a zero so nine seems to not be able to be in any of those cells so nine is either here ah nine right here's a point actually i think can't i extend that logic to yellow and gray and ask where nine goes in yellow and gray and i don't know the answer but i do know that nine cannot be on the line in, in any of those cells. So looking at the geometry of yellow and gray, there is a nine in one of those five cells and there is a nine in one of those five four cells. Now that's the two nines that exist in these two rows of the grid. If I was to try and make this another nine, that would say that these two rows had three nines in them. That would patently break the rules of Sudoku. So actually, that is not a nine. And therefore, the nine has to be here. <laughs> that's really amazing. That's, I think that's good. Again, I think that logic is sound. That's an eight cell region. So the only way we can put a nine in it is to reach row four somehow. And the only way we can reach row four is like that. So that is a nine, a second digit in the grid. It's the ninth cell of the red region. Oh, I know what I should do now. I should come back down here and think about where the nines can actually go then. So nine, nine in yellow. No, or maybe not actually. Nine, it might be worth pencil marking it in, in grey because it's only three positions, but it's all over the place in yellow. Nine is restricted as a digit, actually, generally. No oh, that's a nine. Oh, for goodness sake, it's really restricted. I hadn't spotted this and should have done. I was so obsessed with my colours, but th this line has a nine sum. So that nine, that nine there is repeated here. And that means nine is not there in grey. Nine is here. I've got nines going on. So now my nine in yellow is really restricted. It's, it's done. Where does nine go in yellow? It's got to go here. <laughs> I've got five nines. Can I put nine in? Can I put nine in this region? I feel like I might be able to. Oh, not quite. Oh yeah, I can. Look, I can, it's got to go there. Now I've got six nines. Oh, where's the nine in this column? It can't repeat in the blue. So nine's up in one of those two cells. Uh, I've got the nine. So it's a, it's right. We've got two more nines to place up here. Not in not in purple. Nines are in some of those cells. Um, right. Now, what does that mean then? Oh, sorry, I realise I've just paused there. <laughs> it's because I can't see anything. I can't see how to do that. I don't think that can be the nine. Because if it was, if that was a nine, either green or orange would go into it. And, and it would have to be bordered on both sides, wouldn't it? Because, because we can't make... Yeah, if that's a nine, it's, it's a bit hard to explain, but I think it, hopefully it's clear from the logic that we've been talking about that if, if, if this is a nine, because we know that this, those, these four regions on the left have to occupy the seven cells on the right, we can't divide this up properly now. We've got a domino here, a domino here, but we've got sort of three, 
three exits now coming out and that's that cannot work um, so because if, 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 it, if we did have three exits we'd have to repeat the nine we can't do that we can't have three three regions up here we have to have only two regions and if we put the nine in the middle you, you can't you can't join it with anything and make it work so let me just um, what do I want to do I want to delete this I want to delete this pencil mark nine that's not going to work well, that doesn't actually help us I'm very sorry I think I'm, I think I'm on the wrong track here Although, having said that, it was fairly amazing to find that we could do stuff with 9. Ah, is it something to do with the bottom row then? So I'd forgot, or oh, not appreciated that this was a 9, but look, those 6 cells now, we know what they add up to. They add up to 27. There's 3 lots of 9. So that means by maths, those cells add up to 18. Okay, that probably isn't important. I don't know about that. Um, all right, let's try more region division then, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, what's, what region is that cell a party of? Is it part of a region I've already got in the grid or not? I think not. But that might be wrong. I'm not sure whether it can be orange. Um, but let's let's just think about this. If this was orange, there's no way it's orange. Because you've got to you've got to put four more cells into purple, which is going to take some some cells up here. And then in order, let's let's say that, which is about as efficient as you could do, purple. And then to, to get this to be orange, you'd have to ring it like this. And that's way more than nine cells. So that definitely is not going to work. Right, so this it definitely can't be green. That's an even worse choice. So this is a new color. And for that, we will award it the mantle of light gray. Can I get away with that? I think I can just about see that. I'm never sure about light gray as a color. Um, but that then grows to here. I can't see it very well. I'm going to go dark gray again on the basis. This, this one definitely can't overlap with it. Um, so have we got other cells in the grid that can't be part of these three regions? What about this one? Well, that, yeah, that one clearly can't be green, can it? Because then green would have 10 cells in it. Right, so that one is also gray. And I think that must apply to this one as well. That's the same logic. So that is also gray. And that's very interesting because how do we attach these grays together? And the answer is we don't really know, but we do know that we can't have any other color in that border. If we try and make one of these cells, I don't know, it doesn't matter, orange, how are you going to connect the gray? You're going to have to ring the orange cell in the middle and the orange won't connect to orange anymore. And there's no more regions to be discovered. We know there was only one hidden region and we've now worked out that's gray. So those cells, I think, um, I'm going to just put those in for the first. Is this one also forced to be grey? I think so. You can't get grey. No, yes, absolutely that one as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got eight cells of grey now. I've got eight cells of grey. So I can have one more. So that cell's not grey. Right, so this little line is interesting now. All three of those digits are different. But well, oh, Sorry, they're the same digit in different regions. Um, now, I don't think that can be grey. Because if that's grey, it's going to split this horseshoe up. And that's going to be a single instance, which will be the same digit as this. So grey does not come up there. 
So Gray's final digit then, let's think about that. Gray's final digit is either this one, this one, or this one. So what color is that one then? Is that green? I don't think anything else can reach it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, the only thing that can reach this is green. So that's got to be green. And then we can apply the sort of border restriction again. How could this how could this border contain any other colour but green? It couldn't, because then in attaching green to green, we will isolate that colour from its friends. So all of those have to be green. We're not a million miles away from at least building the borders in the puzzle. How long has it taken me? 50 minutes. I think that's fine. I don't think that's too bad. Um, Right, so, okay, so I've still got to think about purple now. So is purple, purple's going to come up here and that's going to push orange up, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, okay. So green, green only has one more cell to take. So green never visits row three of the grid. So how could, right, we want something that can't be reached by gray and can't be reached by green. So this cell, what color is this cell? If that is orange, surely the world is broken. That, that cannot be orange. Because if that's orange, how do we fit purple's quota in? Well, we could take all three of those cells, but we're going to have to take a cell in row two, and now orange can't meet up with his friend. So that cell is definitely purple, which again means we can't interrupt the flow of purple along the border. So those, so we vir virtually finish purple now. That's eight cells of purple done. An orange, which only has three cells at the moment, four, five, six, has to come out along here. <laughs> so that means that cell's orange. We've only got two cells now that can be the final green. Uh, th this is where we have to make the magic happen, because the moment we can determine the color of this, we're going to know where the single cell segment is. Oh, I see. And then we've got, OK, so this horseshoe is divided in half, which is the same for all the horseshoes. And that makes sense. If I thought hard about the horseshoes originally, I think I I could have worked out that must be the case. They must all the horseshoes must always divide in half this way, because otherwise you get a repeated digit on them and in a in a breaking Sudoku sort of way. I don't know what to do again now. Um, how are we going to get the total? What is it in the puzzle that's going to give us the total for this line? <laughs> I do not know the answer to that. Um, I know that these cells add up to four lots of whatever the single digit total is. So if that's the maximum that could be would be nine. That would make these add up to 36 and these would add up to nine at the bottom. If they add up to nine and these add up to nine, that would mean these added up to these. Ah. If these added up to eight, that would be 32. These would add up to 13. This line is adding up to eight now. So that would have to be, this line is adding up to eight. So that's gonna have to be five, six or seven. Is that getting too big for this? I don't think so. 13, 7, for example, 1, 
six one two or something like that might work. Okay, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, what a shame. I was. I felt like this was going relatively well. Now, what on earth is it going to be then? I don't know. That... No, that's total nonsense. I was about to say something that's so inane, I refuse to even utter it. Oh, hang on, where does... Okay, where does the digit that's on here go in orange? That is an interesting question. Right, there, there, there's a digit that we know is repeated along this blue line. Um, let's make that the digit A. So this is the digit A. Now, where does A go in orange is my question. And I think there's only one cell. I think it's got to go here. And now, okay, now where does A go in, in purple? And it's got to go there. Good grief. Okay, now where does A go in red? And because we've got A in those cells, it can't go there and it can't go along here. So it's got to go there. Now, where does A go in? Oh, I don't believe it. I actually don't believe it. Where does A go in grey? There. Where does A go? Have I, I've done all the A's apart from the one in green. Um, and presumably it's going to go here by Sudoku. That is, that is amazing. So you can actually just plot your way around all of the A's in the puzzle. Okay. But... Has that helped us <laughs> is the next question. Has that helped us somehow? The answer is, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, it might have done. I'm and sorry, and the reason I'm pausing is I'm trying to do uh, I'm trying to spot <laughs> other digits that have this sort of profile where we could just sort of plot them down the diagonals or something like that in these boxes. That would be very useful indeed. Um, do I? Oh, hang on. Where does the nine go in green? Oh, that's a good question. Right. I could have done this before, couldn't I? When I realised that this couldn't be nine, the question I could have asked is where does nine go in green? It seems to have to be in one of those cells because even if green extends here, it can't be a nine. Wow. OK, so that's not a nine. That is interesting. So that's a nine. And that means that's not a nine. So is that helpful? <laughs> is the next question. Has that actually done anything for us at all? I fear the answer is no. Um, oh, but doesn't that mean... Oh my goodness, doesn't that mean that there is a nine? One of those is a nine now. On this line. Oh my goodness, right. So we now know the total for this line. I think.
because because let me just let me just think about this what we're saying now i don't know where these final nines go but one of them they're either in this configuration in which case this is a nine or they're in this configuration and this is a nine either way because we know that this cell here is yellow or uh, green we don't know which it is but but one of these has to be a one cell sum and it so we can't put the we can't have nine here and make this orange because then this could never reach the total whatever it was if this was even if this was a one we can't write 10 into this cell so nine is the total for the internal line um, and that feels like a massive deduction yeah that it well i tell you what that does coming back to the earlier thought about trying to do diagonals is really interesting now because where does that digit go in purple and we know the answer because let's make that b i don't know what it is but i know i know that the sum for this line is nine so i know a plus b now is equal to nine well given i know nine is the total for the the inner line as well and this is a that must be b by mathematics to make sure that this line adds up to nine okay I'm, oh my goodness this this puzzle this is one of the cleverest things i've ever seen in my life this just keeps going i because because i know the totals for these lines a nine that and that's a on the line that's b that's a on the line that's b what on earth is going on here this is this is quite incredible um now and there's probably all sorts of sudoku we can do here but i can't see how to do it b in yellow where is b in yellow now it's not there it's not there it's not equal to a is it it's not nine it can't be there because that's b so b is in one of just two places in this box it's really close to being it's very close to being forced this can't quite see how to do it oh bobbins this is very i feel i feel like right on the cusp of some something very profound here there's something going on with a's and b's uh, i think it might be in this red region how can i how can because b can't be in any of those so b is definitely in one of these three cells okay let's have let's pencil mark that is that useful Do we know? Do we know enough about the world for that to be a useful deduction? <laughs> the answer is I don't know. B B is quite difficult. Hang on, where's B in this region then? B is not there, not there, not here. Oh no, I think I've made a mistake here. I don't think I, I now don't think I can even put B in this region. Oh, but this region isn't complete. Oh, hang on, hang on. Where, where do I put B in here? <laughs> is my question i know that might seem weird but i'm worried that i can't do it well maybe maybe it has got options actually because it's because it's incomplete i think i might be able to get b into it
So maybe it's not this region. Maybe it's this region. It could be any of the regions. There's just there's just something triggering me about B here. So B is not able to be in any of those cells. Now, B also in in the blue region, we know that, that because this is B, B is in, I don't know which cell it is. B, B might be very restricted actually in this blue region. It's not there, it's not there. Oh no, hang on, that's B is in one of two places here, so that's not true. So B is either, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. Right, so B is in one of those two cells, I think. Now, that means B is not there either. So B in grey, where are you allowed to go? You're not in any of those cells or that one, and you're not equal to A. So one of these two cells is B. And therefore, and that's going to join up with grey to give us the, the grey, the, the B in the grey region. Now, okay. Ah, I can do it. I can do it. Because the, the thing that I could also think about is where B is in green. Because B... Yeah, that's the, that's the question. That's the question. Oh, I've just had another really interesting thought. Oh, my brain, my brain is going... Oh, I've just had a... Oh, no, 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 no. You, Simon, are not a clever individual. Oh, you are not a clever individual. Oh no! Right, I've had another, I've had another thought. But anyway, let's come back to the greenage, the greening of the B, because where is green? Where is the, the 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 B in green? And because it can't be in there, and the green is occupying the top row. Well, the only other cell I think it can be in. Well, is is it's got to be in one of these cells, hasn't it? In other words, it's pointing at this cell, which was one of the two cells that could have been our grey, um, our grey B. So that is not the grey B anymore. The grey B must be here, and therefore it gets greyed, which means that cell we've now completed grey. So we can ring grey, and that's made this cell look equal to B. To, well, it must be green. That's the final green cell. So we can do everything in green now. Now we can finish off orange, or at least we do another cell of orange. Um, this is now the nine because it's the single digit total in the column. And this was the thought I had. I'm just going to share it with you now. But this, 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 I know loads of you will have not immediately had this thought and will have been shouting at me. Okay. We did a lot of work thinking about what the single digit total was uh, in this column. Now, if it had not been nine, where would I have put nine in the column? The answer is nowhere. <laughs> this line adds up to nine. So I can't put nine here without making these double zero. I can't put nine here because that would have to have a zero value. So if I'd made the total for column two's line anything other than nine, you couldn't have put the nine in the column. And that would have shortcut this whole fiasco. Anyway, that was the thought that I had. Right, well, this big a nine, I can't repeat nine in purple. So that's got to be green, sorry, green, orange. And now hopefully that can be purple. And there we go. You can finish the color of this remarkable puzzle. Oh my goodness me, now, now, he says, can we use this somehow, some way to plot the nature of B any further? <laughs> is that a possibility or is that a nonsense? That's the question. And I don't know the answer. Um, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm tempted to do, actually. I'm going to increase the size of my A's. 
because I'm I actually know that these digits are a don't I so it's not like here where I know one of those three digits is a B I'm going to increase my size of my B's as well so B B where we actually know the position of the B oh that we don't know the position of that B I've just realized that the B could be in either of those two cells so that would have been a silly thing to do um, Okay, we, we do know that's a B, don't we? I think we do know that's a B. So let's double click our Bs. We've got five B. Oh, oh, where's the B in here? I've got two Bs looking at it. So the B goes there, which knocks, ah, that knocks that B out, which means that's a B, which means that that's a B. I've, all of a sudden, I've got a whole load of Bs going on. I've got... Three, four, five. I've got, I've got nearly all of them. I haven't put a B in this column, which must go in the top region. So that's a B. So these two cells add up to nine, and so do they. Okay, I see, and it's not deadly pattern because this digit will disambiguate it. Um. So therefore, I suppose what we do now is think about, well, what's the next thing to think about? Perhaps that digit, which is the same as that digit, I can see. Oh, yeah, in fact, that digit is not only the same as that digit, it's the same as that digit. Oh, the, no, the, right, it's obviously this digit, actually. I probably should have looked at this digit before. Where does C go in the top row? Well, C is not equal to 9A or B, so it can only go there. Where does C go in this box now, in the blue box? Well, again, C is not equal to 9, and it's not A or B, so it's got to go and hide here. But also, where does C go in orange now? And given that C is not equal to 9, it can't go there, so it's got to go here. So we're probably going to get some sort of... Oh, well, we're nearly getting a sort of propagation down this diagonal. There's now a C on this horseshoe. Can we take that any further? Where is... C? Okay, where is C in red? Now C is in one of those two cells, but I can tell you this for nothing. C is not there, because if C is there, what digit has to accompany C up here to add up to C plus B? And the answer to that is B, and B cannot accompany it, so that cannot be C. There we go. That's a simple little deduction. So that's a C. Um, right, how many C's have we got? Several, but not enough. Um, can we get C in yellow? Well, I can get it enough to be interesting because it's in one of those two cells pointing at that cell. So that becomes a C. So now I've got six C's and I've got, I've not got the C. Oh, hang on. I can get C in green. I think C in green is in one of those two cells, which means it's not there. So C, C in yellow is fixed and I've got seven C's. And what C, I've not got the C in, ah, what region has not got a C in it? Grey, this grey. Um, so, where, well, okay, the C in grey I can get, because that can't be C, that can't be C, that can't be C, those can't be C, so C goes there, C goes there, there you go. All the C's done, very nice too, thank you very much. So now we're going to do D, and D, is that digit obviously because C plus D is going to equal nine and I can immediately see that I can write D in here because C plus D we know this line has the same total as this line um, now if that's if that's D then we know that adds up to nine and that would mean that would need to be A so that's definitely not D so D is definitely in one of one of these cells that's that's probably a trifle desperate actually looking oh no okay where does d go in red d's got to go there by the power of sudoku <laughs> so that's not d anymore um 
Right, come on, can we do better with our dh? We can say that d in yellow is in one of two places, I think. Is that helpful? Probably not. Um, D in this grey region has to be in one of three positions, I think. If that's a D, what's that digit? This line adds up to nine, so that would be a C, and we'd have already got a C in the box, so we can get the D here. That's not a D now. <laughs> I love these little lines, these these effects that we're managing to generate. It's so clever. Um, not of me, I hasten to add, of Fritz Dis. Um, now, come on. Those are not D. That's not D. That, oh, hang on, maybe D in this column is suddenly restricted. D, that can't be D, that can't be D, that can't be D. D is in one of two places. Wow, didn't mean to do that. Um, so D, D, D is in one of those two cells, I think. D, 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 D. Oh, goodness. Where does D go in column three? That's a good question. Not there, not there. Doesn't seem to be able to be there by the power of that D. Don't know what that D is doing there. What's that D doing there? Oh, that was there because we couldn't make that D, wasn't it? Yes, okay. So a D in column three, you can see it can't repeat in yellow, so it goes at the very bottom of the grid. So that's D, that's D, that's D. Nori nori. Um, that's not D anymore. So I've got these D's left. Come on. How do we? Well, that's going to actually, that's going to be hard to resolve. Then maybe that's what these horseshoes are doing. Resolving our D's. All right. So now, now we're going to have to wander into the realms of E's and F's, are we? I have no better idea than to do that. All right, so those cells, I'll just, I'll make one of them E. Um, I'll make one of them F. So in this column now, where does E and F go? Oh, no, well, actually that's interesting, but also it's interesting to ask where E and F go in yellow. E and F in yellow are not there, so they actually go in those two cells. Oh, whoopsie. Ah, what's going on? This is what happens when you can't look at the keyboard when you're typing. Um, but also that's E or F, isn't it? Because in this column, we need to put E and F. Now, has that actually done anything for us? Maybe not. So we still, okay, we're left with the final pair that add up to nine which are going to be G and H. So again, if we go G and H there, we know these are a GH pair in column one. F, H. Ah, all right, here's something. Where do F and H go in gray? And because they can't go in those cells, these two cells have to be an F, H pair, and that seems to only have the ability to be F. So that is F, and that's H which means that's F and that's E, which means that's F, ah, H I mean, and that's G. Now what's that digit? I have no idea. We're doing letter Sudoku, A, A, B, C, D, E is what it is. There's an E, in, that's E in the corner. That's E in the spotlight, losing its religion. I'd love it if E turned out to be three. Um, it would sort of be a double song worthy thing. Now what's that digit? That is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I think. I think I haven't put G in. Where, where is G? There. Okay, so now those two digits must be, well, digits, those two letters must be known. A, B, C, D, E, E and G. Ah, G. G is there again. Goodness. G, and that's E, I believe, because uh, this grey doesn't have an E in it. Right, what are those two digits? F and something. F and H. Bar humpuck. <laughs> That's very annoying. 
I don't think that's resolved. That might be wrong. Oh. Uh, what about this column? Oh, F, G, and H. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna resort to using the number pad on the, using the mouse to type in letters. I'm doing it so badly with the keyboard. Um. Do I know what B and D equal? Can that tell me what that digit is? B and D are definitely, they definitely don't add up to 9 because B and A add up to 9 and D and C add up to 9. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how we're meant to do that. Um, okay, where is E in green? I haven't put I haven't put E into it and there's an E there, so E is there, which must mean that's F or H. Okay, we'll put that in. I can't see how to resolve that. So these digits are F G or H. Oh there's definitely a G up here. Uh, okay, so what's that digit? Yeah, that, yeah. okay, so <laughs> let's continue the nonsense pencil marking I'm doing here. There's a G up here in this FGH triple. So that digit can't be G, which is, is one of its options. Its options were F, G and H, so that's only F or H now. So does that mean that's a G? I think it does. So that's a G, that's not a G. I feel, I feel like I'm saying, uh, you know, modern men, uh, modern major general, satagy. That's that's what I'm thinking. You'll say that, satagy. Um, it must have been, it must have involved uh, elemental strategy. You'll say that I was the greatest general who ever satagy or something. Um, Anyway, okay, if that's that is now an FGH triple. So what are those cells? D and something. D and E. Oh, that would be good if that's true. I haven't put no, I haven't put E in. I haven't put E into that region. E has to go there by Sudoku. That's great. So that's D, and that's D, and that's not D. So this is F or H. Um, F, G, this is F, G or H, not F. So that's G or H. <laughs> um, so we're saying that B plus D is equal to C plus G or H, which is one of those digits. Oh, this column's quite replete, isn't it? I've not put A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H into those cells. F, G, H. Um, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm getting a bit bogged down here. I mean, I can obviously keep pencil marking these, but it seems I don't know that I'm actually taking anything forward by doing it. E's, F's, everything is E, F's, G's and H's. Let's check this column as well. A, B, C, D, E, F, H is what we've got at the top there. Right, so somehow, some way this gets resolved. That would be nice to know indeed. And then somehow, Somehow, if we can resolve this, we have to do the mathematics of this to actually get numbers in. This is this is so clever, isn't it? It's just magnificent. Um, come on. I feel like we've cracked the back of it. I just have to spot something now. Where is it going to be? Is it going to be a horseshoe? This horseshoe, B plus D is equal to C plus G or H, which is that digit at the bottom. Um, but how do I know anything about the size? F, D and H add up to nine. So they they cannot be eights or nines or sevens. F, D and H are 
Midly or low, F, D and H. F, D and H are middly or low. Uh, the other thing I might want to think about doing, I'm just wondering about Can I colour my F's and H's here? What's going on? I can't. I can't quite see it. I'm just. I'm just wondering whether I've got two colours of F and H looking at this cell. That's what I'm thinking. Um, let me just quickly do some colouring. That I will make that. That I will make that. So that's therefore yellow. So that's therefore orange. So that's therefore. That's not worked, has it? Um, no, I don't think it has. So this is not the orange flavor of F and H. Ah, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Well, it's not the yellow. It's not the yellow flavour by maths. Oh, that's weird. That is so weird. Right. This is this is very important. I thought colouring was going to help me. And it well, it sort of does. It sort of does. I was hoping I would be able to prove these were different, and then I could have said this couldn't be F or H. But I can do it a different way. Um, if this was an F or an H, it would have to be the yellow flavour because it's seeing the orange flavour. But that would imply that this horseshoe has the same. We, we're adding F H to the same to the same number. D and E should be the same number for the maths to work of the horseshoe, and they aren't the same number because they're D and E and they are different. So that cannot be F or H. That has to be G. That's really, that's very clever indeed. Um, again, a Fritz this. Right, so that's now H by the power of, m that's F by the power of magic. I'm going to be careful about what I type here. F and G, see that, so that's H. I don't want to make a mistake here. That would be somewhat disastrous. So that's, that's H, which we know is the same as that. So that's F, that's F. F and H get knocked out of that cell. That's become an E. So that should be a G. Now, look, we can tidy up all of these things at the top now. G comes out of here. E comes out of here. Oh, we're going to get left with a deadly pattern, are we? Oh, no. <laughs> we are. <laughs> okay. But... What do we know about D and E? D and E are... Oh, D and E don't add up to 9. Uh, so that... Right, so that cannot add up to 9. Oh, that's it. That's it. Right. If we <laughs> we know that E and D are not together on the line. So that means these, this pair do not add up to 9. If that was an H, that would be a G by Sudoku... And H and G do add up to 9. So that couldn't work. So that's not H. That's F. There we go. Um, that's F. Therefore, that's... Oh, I'll do it slowly. That's F. That's E. That's E. That's G. That's G. That's H. And that's H. <laughs> I think that's right. So now I've coloured the whole grid. I'm going to get rid of... I'm going to get rid of my adulterating colours down here and admire the complete solution thank you very much for watching no i'm only joking there must be a way of solving this um okay so i've got nines and i've got some relationships between numbers down here and i've got i think it's going to be about this three cell sequence that seems to be the outlier doesn't it f d and h so But that adds up to 9 as well. So E adds up to D plus H. E is equal to D plus H. Can I use that anywhere? E, oh, yes, hang on. E is equal to D plus H. So up here, 
E is equal to D plus H. So the bottom half of this equation is 2D plus H. So the top half of the equation is H plus F. So I can cancel the I can cancel the H is out and I get F is equal to 2D. So F we've now learned is even. Right. That's extremely interesting. And and F was equal to 2D. So F so D can't be too big. D's got to be 1, 2, 3, or 4. And F is 2, 4, 6, or 8. Ah, and F is not 8, because it couldn't go in this sequence if F was 8. Because that's a 3-cell sequence adding to 9. So F is now 2, 4, or 6, and D is 1, 2, or 3. Okay, and then we've got another D here. Um, so D is 1, 2, or 3, plus G. What's going on in this one? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I feel like I should understand this instantly, and I just am not quite doing it, am I? So this is saying, what did we say down here? We said that E was equal to D plus H. E is equal to D plus H. So E is equal to D plus H. So G is equal to 2H, I think that's saying. Is that right or wrong? E is E is equal to D plus H. That is right. E is equal to D plus H. So if E is equal to D plus H then E, I'm trying to lay this. <laughs> so that's D plus 2H. D plus 2H. So the D's cancel out and G is equal to 2H. But G and H are related. So G is equal to 2H and adds up to 9. So G G, if G is equal to 2H and adds up to 9, 6 and 3 must be the only way that works. Yeah, so G is 6, I think, is what this is saying, and H is 3. E, but hang on, I'm now, I'm, I'm losing, the reason I'm pausing here is I thought that I'd disprove that up here, but maybe I've just got confused myself too. The H is a cancelling up here. And I've got F, oh no, I've got F and D. F and D. Oh uh, yeah, no, I think I've just, I think I've just, <laughs> I think I've just got confused between my F's and my D's. My H's and my G's. So here it's different. I've got t G is equal to 2H. So G in this relationship, surely that means that G is 6 and H is 3. I think that's the only way that will work mathematically. So G is equal to 6. H is equal to 3. And therefore, D is not 3 anymore. D up here we said was 1, 2 or 3. It can't now be 3. So D is 1 or 2, which means that I think F was double D, wasn't it? So if, 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 so if, right, what, so what's going on now? So if D is 1, E is 4, 
And if D is 2, E is 5. So E is 4 or 5, and E is in a relationship with F. So that E and F are a 4, 5 pair now, adding up to 9. 4, 5 pair adding up to 9. So if, if because E is 4 or 5, F must be 4 or 5. But if F was 5, that couldn't be big enough, could it? Because if that was 5, we'd have 8 here. E would be 4, and that would have to be 4. That doesn't work. Right, so F, F is 4. <laughs> F is 4, E is 5. And now C, oh gosh, I was thinking this is, doesn't work, but actually it's D. No, D, D, can be, D can be 2 and work. Okay, that's good. Um, what, right, maybe this one. Have we got? We've done that horseshoe. We've done that horseshoe. Oh no, we don't need it. Look, C is in a relationship with a two, adding up to nine. So C has become seven out of nowhere. And now this horseshoe will tell us the answer. B is eight in order to make three plus seven equal two plus. So, so that's eight, and A is one. And that might be all of the puzzle done. <laughs> yes. Wow. It's another epically long video for a fabulous puzzle. That's one of the cleverest puzzles you will ever see in your life. Honestly, that was so ridiculously clever. I got very confused at the end between my D. I got in my brain. I had the wrong letters i had the two equations i thought were the same and i was trying to make them work and they weren't they were using different letters but we did make our way through it in the end and it was fabulous absolutely fabulous what a puzzle that's one of the that is the test is right that is one of the great puzzles of all time because to achieve that to achieve that sort of it was a balance solve it was it was a beautiful, it's a beautiful puzzle to do. And to achieve that with just that amount of information at the start is quite frankly breathtaking, Fritz Diss. That is quite frankly breathtaking. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to have a word with the powers that be about the new book and see if we can maybe persuade you to get that in it because that is that is something very very special indeed anyway thank you for watching i'm so sorry if i've taken a lot of your time again this evening it was a hard puzzle um but i think absolutely worthy of an enormous audience um so share it with your friends and let's see if we can get it one thanks for watching we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic